Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. I'm Blake, and today I want to show you how to make a fake mat so that you can get pictures printed that have a really odd crop and not have to worry about um, how you're going to get it custom framed or custom matted. Now, it is, it is a, it's a Photoshop trick, but it can work pretty effectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, crop this photograph. It's it's dying to be cropped. If I look at this, um, it was with a, a focal length of about 17 millimeters. So it's very wide open because I wanted to get everything in there knowing that I'd crop it later. So I'm going to crop right up to the edge of those bricks and then crop right to maybe the tops of those trees right where that X kind of pattern happened with that sky. And I'm just going to press OK. So now, if I were to try and print this and then mat it and frame it, this is a, pretty much a, an eight inch photograph by 18. So trying to find an eight by 18 mat to go into maybe a 24 by 36 frame is gonna be pretty much impossible unless you get someone to custom frame it or you can custom frame it, and that can get pretty costly. So what you can do is you can fake it. So I'm gonna double click this background to make it its own layer. Now I'm gonna make a new layer just above it. So now I want to go to edit, or actually image, my apologies, and go to canvas size. Now with canvas size, you can actually, if you knew the math, uh, what 18 minus 36 was, roughly 36, and or 18, and then you know 8 minus, 24 minus 8, you could possibly figure out uh, how big you need this to be if this was set to relative. If this was, was set to relative, it would add those measurements to each side, to the tops and the bottoms. But if it's if relative is unchecked, it's showing you the width and the height of the actual canvas that you're working on, rather than giving you a relative distance of what you're going to add to it. So if I change this to 36 and I change this to 24, it's now going to change the entire canvas size of this to 24 by 36 without having to do any math of what I'm going to add on to each side. So now what I want to do is I want to fill this with white. So I'm going to press Shift F5 and fill using white. Press OK. So now I want to press Command or Control and select the, the original layer 0. Uh, Command or Control by clicking on the little layer icon here is going to give you a selection of exactly what is in that layer. Now I'm going to go and create a mask for that. So I'm going to press mask on the white layer that I just created. And of course, because my selection was the background, the mask that is created is a mask for that background. So all I have to do on that mask is press Control I to invert it. So now what I want to do is I want to <clears throat> I want to create um, a fake mat within this. So in, in doing that, I would need to make this selection again. And if I wanted to expand this selection, um, I could try to expand the selection and and then add some some border effects to it. But as I press expand, so let's just do this. Let's go select and go to modify and go to expand. And let's just do 30 pixels. When I expand this by 30 pixels, and I zoom in, it gives me rounded edges. So if I were to fill this with, say, gray, like I want to do, um, I'll just get a random gray color here. That, that's good. Um, it's going to make a rounded edge. Now, we all know that mats do not have rounded edges. So the way around that, I'm going to go back here a little bit, is I'm going to click on this layer up here. Um, make sure you're on the white layer and go to Filter, Other, and Maximum. So now this this maximum being set is going to uh, increase that size by 30 pixels, but it's going to go going to do it inward, just like you would if you were actually matting a photograph. That mat sometimes comes in about a, an eighth to a quarter inch on both sides of the photograph. I'm going to do the same thing with this, and make sure that preserve squareness is selected. And now I'm going to press OK. So what I'm basically going to do here is make the matte border. I'm going to fill this with that same gray. So I'm going to press Shift F5 and then fill it with that same colored gray, it's like a light colored gray. I mean, if you look at the percentage here of um, of our black, we're we're really not even close to uh, a middle gray. That would be like 18% black. We're more towards um, like uh, just a, a medium gray, a light gray, actually. Kind of like a shadow gray and press control d to deselect that 
So now what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a gray border all around this. And that gray border is all fine and well. But um, we all know that mats kind of cast a shadow where depending on the lighting that's, that's hitting them. So what I wanna do is I wanna get the diagonal lasso tool and I'm gonna zoom in right here. If you, the, the hot key for zooming with any, um, any tool selected is control or command and space bar and then you can just click and drag and zoom in and out while you still have a tool selected. If you release control and space bar, it's going to uh, release that, um, that magnifying glass. I'm gonna select right here on this corner and go in, oops, go in right onto this corner and then zoom all the way out to this corner down in the lower left and go right to this corner and then come out to this corner. And then I'm gonna go all the way back over. And then just once I get to the other edge, just kind of double click right here. And that's gonna make that nice border for me. So now what I wanna do is I wanna get a white brush. So I'm gonna press B for brush. And I'm gonna press the right bracket key until I make my brush relatively large. And now right here, if you look at my colors, there's a, a black and a gray selected. If I press D, that will get me to my default colors. And then if I press X, that will switch me from black to white. So now what I can do is just barely just kind of hit these edges. I still want to maintain that edge. I'm just kind of, see I have such a large brush selected that I can hit those edges and still kind of uh, leave the, the gray that's there. And this is going to be like a fool the eye effect um, to make it look like this is actually a uh, a mat, but in reality, we know that we faked it in Photoshop. So when you print it, yeah, it might not look like a mat um, from up close, but from far away, you're gonna have those edges, you're gonna have that uh, kind of mat looking effect. And to top it off, what we can do is we can go right up in this upper corner here, we can make a new layer, and again, get that diagonal uh, tool, and just make a very small selection. We're gonna basically make a very small line tool selection here and uh, fill that with a dark gray um, by pressing brush and then hit that with a, a darker gray. So that's gonna give us that fake looking matte effect. The cool thing about doing this fake looking matte is that you can do all kinds of things to this matte now. So I can even, I can sign this matte. I can get a very small brush and create a new layer uh, my brush size is about, uh, let's go with like a 15. And I can just, uh, let me go to a black brush here. And I can just, I can sign it as big as I want because if I press Control T, I can always just make this signature smaller and then put it right underneath that photograph. So now we have a fake looking mat. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, you could do this for display purposes on the web and people would never know, it looks like a mat. Uh, what I can also do is if I go into my textures here, I can open up a texture, a nice wood grain texture will look good with this photograph. And I can uh, drag this and drop this right on top of what I've got going on here and just pull it up. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm really just going to um, really lower the opacity on this a lot. And now I've got like a faux wood grain looking matte in the background. Uh, if you wanted to, you could really blur it. Go to filter, blur. Um, uh, or filter Gaussian blur for that matter. And you could blur that out. And then of course, it's covering my photograph now. So what I'd have to do is again, make a selection by pressing command or control on my original layer and then going up to um, layer number four and making a mask, and then again, inverting that mask. So that's just something kind of cool that you can do with this. You can also add some really kind of cool effects to make things break the mat that you would not be able to do with a regular photograph uh, if you matted it. This is really cool in my opinion. Um, so let me go ahead and open up that photograph that I already have pre-done. So what I've done here is I've made this same mat over a picture of the of the arch in in uh, in St. Louis. So if I zoom into this arch and I make a selection of the arch, just make a nice liberal selection here of this arch. 
I don't want anything in the outside. I should probably have selected the background layer. Let me do that again now because when you're, when you're using any selection tool, especially any automated selection tool, you want to make sure that you're on the layer of the object that you actually want to select. Otherwise, you're going to run into some dif difficulties like you just saw there. And I'll just make a nice, handsome selection like that. And then go up here to my um, turn that layer back on. So what I want to do is I want to bring this layer on top of, of my mat layer. And I could uh, just go ahead and add right to that mask and just paint into that masked area with black. I have my masked area selected here and I'm painting with black. And I'm now breaking the mat with my photograph. That's pretty cool. Um, if we wanted to, especially with this one, we could kind of make it look like a like a nose ring <laughs> of a mat. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that background again, and then just kind of go up here and grab that, and then I can paint that back in with white. Um, and that might make it look kind of cool. We'll see what happens. If I paint this in with white, um, bring that area back. Get a smaller brush here. Now it looks kind of like a nose ring grabbing the mat. So you can get pretty creative with this stuff. You could actually send this to any print shop and have them print it uh, on a piece of 30, 24 by 36 paper um, and then frame it into a 24 by 36 frame and not have to actually pay for a mat. Um, so it's a pretty cool idea. Give it a shot. See if it works for you. If anything, uh, you don't have to get it printed. You can just publish it to the web like this. It might look kind of cool on your website. Maybe uh, if you're trying to sell images on your website, you could do something like this to um, entice people to want to buy that photograph. So again, I'm Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com, and this was how to effectively crop a photograph yet still be able to print it uh, without having the fear of uh, paying an insane amount of money for a custom frame. Have a great weekend, and I hope this inspires you to get some of your photographs printed instead of leaving them on your computer. Uh, I hope this tutorial helped. If you have any constructive criticism, I'd love it. If you have any ideas for future tutorials, maybe you're trying to figure something out and don't know how to do it, you're more than welcome to email me, everydayhdr at gmail.com, or contact me here on YouTube, or Everyday HDR, or HDR Insider. You have many options to get a hold of me. Have a great weekend, enjoy yourselves, and stay inspired.